What's up guys, welcome back. Last video, we did the unboxing and review of the Life Size Mark 85 right behind me here. Today, we are going to be checking out Doctor Strange Life Size Bust. Now, I have not seen the prototype of it, but I, the picture looks really good. So I'm excited to be seeing what it looks like. So let's get it out of the box.
Okay, so that's the unboxing and we assemble everything. And as you can see, man, there's so many boxes, so many layers of them. I'm not sure why. I don't think they need to, but anyways, once we get to the art box, see, it's so much smaller than the shipper box. And the artwork on it looks really nice. And I really do like the back as well, where it's just the photo of Dr. Strange turning the back towards us. That's cool. Now let's check out what came in the box. So here we have the assembly guide, which we didn't use, put that away. And certificate of authenticity. This is number 181 out of 200. Very cool. And see what else came in here. Queen Studio gloves, which I didn't use. And this looks like a founder or something like some makeup which we're not going to be using and this thing right here for the plaque well yep that's about it that's what came in the box this is the first of their master series that they are coming out with it has platinum silicone skin custom glass eyes real fabric materials and artificial hair Start with the base here, it is of Sanctum Sanctorium, home of Dr. Strange himself, located in New York City. And here you see like the part of the iconic circular skylight and Dr. Strange nameplate. And you can see the wear and tear in the building as well. Moving up, Steven is wearing his blue tunic top, wrapping around the bust. He has the eye of Agamotto right here, the pendant and it's not removable, it's stuck to the fabric. And it also comes with the cloak of levitation right here that you can put it on. If you don't like it, you don't have to, but the way you put it on here, it's basically just wrap around the, the body. And then there's a little button right here that you can put it on, just snap it in. Two on each side, just like that. Here you go, easy enough. And it has a very nice detail of the fabric. Also, you can see some leather inside on the trim right here. Very nice material as well. Different kind of materials. These are all handmade, by the way. And on top here, it is wide, so you can actually play around with it, pose it however you like. And I think it has it wrap around the top like this in the movie. Moving up to his face, this is Dr. Strange, Stephen Strange, played by Benedict Cumberbatch. And it looks pretty good, as far as I can tell. The facial hair is all hand plucked in, same as the hair up top, with different color right here, just like in the movie. Very nice details. All right, let's get to the measurement. Start with the base only. It is about 11 and a half inches or about 29 centimeter. The depth is about 11 inches or 28 centimeter. The height, it is around just under 33 inches or about 83 centimeter. And with a cloak, well, it is not possible, but I don't think it mattered that much anyways. But the length, it comes to about 33 inches or about 84 centimeter. Doesn't take up way too much space, which you can, you know, always play around with the cloak itself.
I'm gonna give my thought on this piece. By the way, I think it's a great bus to have. Just a missed opportunity not to do like the whole half torso with the arms, you know, like coming out, like doing a spell or whatever. For the base, I think they did make a great choice on making it Sanctum Sanctorum base. And just the uh, circular skylight right here, I think they should have made it lighter. That would be actually make it look better as well. As far as the nameplate goes, I don't think it needs it. I think they should have made it like magnetic or something, kind of like um, the Iron Spider. That would be better. And also uh, the color on the concrete here, it looks a bit fake, but not a big deal. The eye of Akamoto looks really good, very well detailed. One thing though, I would love for it to light up, you know, just kind of make it glow in the green or whatever, turn it on and off. I think you have enough space to put a little battery back here somewhere. And also, you see this, they kind of stitch it right to the tunic, which I don't know why they went that way. I think it's better if you can just take it on and off as a prop as well. And I really do like the tunic. I think they chose the right fabric for it and also all the stitching and the patterns on here. It looked just like in the movie, man. And I like the cloak, really. Like, look at the pin. This looks really awesome. And all the materials, the patterns that they've been stitching on this piece, just amazing, man. It feels really good as well. It's so premium. And I like this, the way you just snap it on. It's so easy. And you can, you know, have it on or have it off. Doesn't matter. Can't find a hole. Okay, here we go. So it is easy and it's very easy to pose as well. I do like this, except uh, sometimes you can't really, you know, make it like in the shape that you like. It's just kind of flopping everywhere but doesn't really matter. And the inside of this piece is really awesome as well. I think it feels kind of like silk. Very nice, love it. Even the back, like they really do pay attention to details over here. Man, look at the different material that they have to stitch together to make this. Just awesome. It looks like there's some padding inside here as well. Very good. As far as the likeness goes, I think they did a great job here. I give it a very good 95%, no doubt about that. Just check out all the details of the skin, man. The creases on the forehead, everything just look really, really good, which you can't really see from the photos, but when you see it in hand, like me, God, it looks so good. Like even the lips, you can see the little crack underneath. All the facial hair, Looks so real, like none of them look the same. Very nice, man. The eyes looks like it's, it has life, you know, just kind of popping out. The one thing though, his teardrop right here, I'm, I don't, I'm not so sure if the actor has the same teardrop. It looks kind of a little saturated, what I'm saying. The eyebrow looks really good, very nice. Even the sideburn, the ear, looks very lifelike, man. Love it. The one thing that I hate about any of their bust is when they put a lot of product in it, you can't really style it anywhere. Look, so look how hard it is. It's almost feel like a wig. And you can't really, you know, style the hair the way that you want. I kind of like him having his bank down a little bit in the front here, which I can't. So there's only this you know, strand of hair that kind of come out. So you can't really do much with that. But on this side, it looks really good as well. Like there's gonna be a strand just coming out of the hair. So try to play with it, but it's really hard to do anything because of all the products it got. in the back like here I'm not sure what's going on here it looks like some missing hair but thank god I am gonna have the cloak on anyway so you're not gonna be seeing that overall I think they did a great job on this Dr. Strange bust now I paid about four thousand dollars all in for it which is a lot of money 
but I think it's worth every single penny. It's just too bad it doesn't come with a full torso with the arms, like I said before. But I don't think any other company will be doing the Doctor Strange life-size bus like this anytime soon. Alright guys, that's it for the unboxing and review of Doctor Strange life-size bust. Let me know what you guys think of it. Do you like it? Do you not? For me, I cannot wait to move him back here behind me where he'll be displayed. I hope you guys enjoy the video as always. Thank you for supporting and I'll see you guys on the next one, bro. Peace.